welcome to another little tech tidbit. Now, today I'm going to do a little video on UHS-2. Now, you may wonder what the hell that is. I'm not. So, if you look at your memory cards, we've got three different speed sets, really. It's quite confusing, and the most current one that uh, things are classified by, they have a class. So, the class might be 2, 4, I think it was 6, and then 10. A lot of things require 10. But we also have the U. So, if you look on the card, there might be a tiny little U, and you will have U1 and U3. And then, concurrently with those specs, you'll have UHS-1, which is what most things are. And really, not many devices uh, support anything but, well, so I shouldn't say support, use or utilize the speed of anything above the UHS-1. Now, now, there's a very tangible difference between the UHS-1 and UHS-2, and I'll show you that in a minute. But it's, you have to ask the question, why would I need anything faster than UHS-1? Well, at the moment, uh, let's look at what we have. We've got the U1 and the U3, and they're very, very specific differences. So the U1 may be a limit of 60 megabits per second, and the U3 will allow you to get up to set over 100, 104, which is a limit of the UHS-1 interface. So if you're going to have, say, a GoPro camera, it's limited at 60 megabytes per second, or most of the drones, of the consumer drones, are limited to 60 megabytes, 50 megabytes per second. They will be fine on a U3 card, a U1, sorry, a U1 card, because it allows up to 60 megabits per second. Now, if you were going to try, say, the Sony Action Cam or the Sony ASR7, uh, the A7R2, which I have, they can record at 100 megabits per second. So a U1 card in that case would not be fast enough. And actually, if you put uh, a U1 card in the Sony Action Cam, it will give you a media error if you try and set it to uh, the 4K 100 megabits per second or the 1080p 100 megabits per second. Okay, so that kind of clarifies why you may need a U1 or a U3. Now, what's the difference between the UHS-1 and the UHS-2? So the, the bandwidth, obviously, of the interface limits the UHS-1 at 104 megabits per second, and the, the UHS-2 will let it go all the way up to, I think it's 300 plus megabits per second. Now, no devices I have actually support that, so what is the point? Well, there's two things I can think of. One of them is to future-proof your card. So you keep these cards for a long time. Now, obviously, you buy these huge sizes now, and they store an incredible amount of images and also a lot of video, even at 4K. The primary reason for me to use these is getting the information off. So I may have hundreds and hundreds of images on a card or a lot of 4K, and I want to stick in my computer and get it off as fast as possible, and I'm not hanging around waiting for that. Okay, having a quick look at this card I've been showing in the background. It's, uh, this is the macro SD. I do have the regular SD as well, and you can see they actually have an extra eight pins there. This is beside a regular UHS-1 card, as you can see the difference. And yeah, there's the SD card, it's bigger brother, just for the 8 pins for the extra bandwidth just to achieve those higher speeds. So yeah, you can obviously see the configuration difference in the hardware, so you really need a reader for that. So I have this current reader, my Transcend, and the, the new one I just got is UHS-2 compliant. So I've got a really good uh, set of hardware here to do some speed tests and see the actual difference, plugging it into obviously a USB-3 connector. Okay, now everybody loves tests, so let's get through to the tests. We'll do some synthetic tests, and I'll try and do some real tests. Now, I, I'm going to plug this both into the computer, directly into the USB 3 or the SS port. Uh, a word of warning, I've had problems before plugging this uh, device through a USB 3 hub, even though everything along the topology connection was USB 3. I've had problems, so if you are having problems not getting the full speeds, try and plug it directly into the computer itself, into the motherboard USB plug. Okay, now on my computer, I've got this little uh, concoction of files, so we can see all these uh, 4K MPEG files at the bottom, you can see it's 7.52 gigabytes, and also I've got all those in a folder with several thousand pictures, so you can see in there I've got uh, 2800 files plus a few, a total in 56 gigs, so this is going to be a really good test. Now you will see that the bigger files will transfer differently than uh, many little files because that involves access time, so it's really good to have uh, both to see. If you are just going to be dragging across 4K huge files or thousands and thousands of images, it will make a difference. And it's off! But it takes a moment to pop up with this information and the speed. Oh, it started very low, it started very low, but it's steadily gaining, it's steadily gaining. <laughs> okay, we, uh, so I did a move there, so we'll be trying to delete it from the the my computer but my computer here it's a raid ssd so it, it's capable up to 1200 megabits megabits megabytes per second so it's a lot faster than the sd card so that shouldn't be the bottleneck anyway so you can see it's got up to like a steady 85 megabytes a second there 
Uh, that's pretty fast. So this is on the SD card UHS-1 conventional. I exist. It's saying it's going to take about 20 minutes. So let's stick that up in the top left corner and we can start the other one off concurrently. So now top right, that's basically me just dragging the other way. So we're reading from the card, but I also made it move it. So it's deleting from the card at the same time. So you see the speed is just a little bit higher. Uh, and this is pretty much the 10, 12%, maybe lower than what the UHS-1 limit is. So I think it's 104 megs, we're getting 90. So once you add a gearbox and all the fluid, you know, losing that kind of transmission force, that's what you're gonna pretty much end up with. So now bottom left, let's try the adding the UH-2 and with the same start time. So this is exactly the same as top left, but I'm using the UHS-2 interface on the transcend device. You can see we're getting up to nearly 200 megabytes per second. Now I think what this is showing is we've got a whole new bracket of performance with the UHS-2 interface and the memory card is the is the thing that's not performing up to 300 megabytes per second which that UHS-2 will allow us to. Now let's pump up the, the read access because that should be a little bit faster. So we'll put that on the bottom right. And she's hurtling along 230 megabytes per second. That's pretty crazy. Now this card states it can do uh, 240 megabytes per second. So that's pretty close. It's not bad actually as far as what they quote and what it can actually do. So yeah, so now we can see at the bottom is UHS-2 and the top we have the older UHS-1 and they're basically both the similar transcend readers. One of them's the eight, the nine. I'll put links in the bottom of that. So you can see number two. Now I'm going to speed this up a little bit because I want to show you some at the end. At the moment, this is all currently uh, the 4K video. But you can see in the actual files where it's got the C0, that's file name structured from my Sony A7R2 camera. So this is all 4K video, super high, uh, large gigabyte files, but not a lot of files. And I think you can actually see at uh, the point when it starts, it turns to JPEGs. You can see the speed will reduce because the access speed is not as high or it, and it really slows down the speed. So you can see down at the bottom right now, because that's far ahead of all the others, is it's dropped into where it's uh, looking at the file name. You can see that's all DSC and, J and JPEG files. So that's actually the images where you've got hundreds and hundreds of files. So it's not able to transfer because it has to do access on each one of them. Okay, we'll do some magic now and finish them all off. Now you can see with the bottom right one that actually finishing 516, now that is the one you're going to be using at the moment because no devices that I really know of can use UHS-2 on the actual device. So the main benefits of getting the reader, uh, UHS-2 and getting the UHS-2 memory cards is for the bottom right and that's the advantage you're going to get over the top right. So a tangible real life scenario would be you come home with a days worth of stuff on your SD card you drop it in and one of them gets you in five minutes onto your computer one of them gets you in 11 30 so it's completely up to the scenario you're going to use it if you just you know if you're going to have a plenty of time and maybe not really worth it but if you want to future proof devices that you're going to buy in uh, in new anyway and also if you're traveling and you really that time's important like you've only got so much time to get your data onto your device and get it off you know email it off or whatever work on it and it, those minutes may be important. Okay, let's have a little look at the synthetic benchmarks, crystal mark, uh, pretty much representative of the test we've just done. You know, we've got 90 meg on the, this is on the left with our UHS-1, and on, on the right we've got number two, so we've got 224, we actually got a bit more than that, 230. Uh, and in comparison, let's see my RAID SSD. Uh, quite a lot higher, as you can see, completely pointless, I know. <laughs> Uh, well, we're a bit overwhelmed with all this tech and speed. Let's not forget, if you're into more professional cameras, you knew to have the CFAS, that supposedly goes up to 525 megabytes a second read and 450 megabytes a second write. But you'd also have to buy a, a reader write for your PC or Mac for that too, to get those kind of speeds. And yes, certainly least, I would not recommend this little uh, plug-in card reader I got for my uh, Lexar memory card if you have to pay a little bit more to get this don't bother it's absolutely useless i think i got 30 megabyte read speeds and write speeds so throw it in the trash get something like the the transcend i'll link it in the description uh, it seems really really good but that absolutely useless and if you made it this far thanks for watching this little tech tidbit 
I really enjoy doing these things. Uh, I'll link some more, I'll link to the playlist of all the tech tidbits if you want to follow all those and have a little browse through, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.